and a very good evening to you. Ipswich's win last night saw Leicester drop to second in the championship. The victory here will take them back to the top and 11 points clear of third place Leeds as the halfway stage of the season approaches. Now Millwall only missed out on the championship playoffs on the last day of each of the last two seasons. So in that context, their current malaise is even more worrying. Joe Edwards won his first game in charge, but a run of three defeats in four since has combined with others finding form, and the Lions are only two points clear of the bottom three coming into tonight. Leicester, mathematically, came into this week's fixtures with the most points of any championship side in history after 20 games. So they can say that the best team this level's ever seen, Adam Mill will stop that very very difficult and when you're not in great form this isn't the place you want to come because I've been so impressed with the way that Enzo Moresco set this team up he's revitalized some of the players that barely kicked a ball last season the likes of Vestergaard in particular I think has been has been fantastic and shown the desire the hunger um, that you need in this division Saturday Tuesday Saturday Tuesday there's been many players that have done that um, and the way they keep the ball is very, very impressive. Winks, in particular, is that man that just... I keep saying he's the pop-pass master. He just keeps things moving and almost lulls the opposition into a trance. So Millwall have got to be concentrated, but at the same time, I think they can cause Leicester problems either on the break or certainly from set plays. Well, this is how the two teams line up. Leicester in possession will look like a 3-2-2-3. Hamanson in goal. Cody back in the side tonight, Vestergaard and Fass, Pereira and Winks, and Didi and Dewsbury Hall, Fatawu, Daka and Mavadidi. Millwall will play with both a back three and a four under Joe Edwards. We think it'll be a 4 4 2 tonight. That's the way they've gone the last few games. Sarkic in goal, Leonard, Harding, Cooper and Wallace, Norton, Cuffey, Saville, Campbell and Honeyman with what more off Bradshaw. Uh, what are your thoughts on the two teams? Starting first of all with Leicester City, Dean. I think it's interesting that Cody gets a start because he's not really been the in-man for Enzo Maresca and how will that affect who will play as the kind of starting at left back but as we know Pereira will go into midfield and then it becomes a back three so who is going to be that left-sided centre-back or will it be best to guard so that'll be interesting to, to see but again I mean obviously no Ian Acho, no Vardy but you've got Pats and Daka as your third choice striker which kind of makes a mockery really in this division that you've got that depth of quality in your in your centre forward um, so they'll be very very difficult and and Will it be a 4-4-2 for, for Millwall? Oh, I very much doubt it. And what he's done is he's brought in players that he knows will put in a right shift, that are disciplined, that are intelligent out of possession, the likes of Watmore, Honeyman, Savile coming back in. And I think they, they're they not going to outplay Leicester. And if you think you can, then I think they'll get beat easily. I think they'll be trying to be hard to beat. And they've got to have quality when they have the ball. And that's the key, really. Uh, the benches tonight, Justin Cassidy and Chowdhury. It's Justin and Chowdhury the drop out of the side that beat Plymouth 4-0 at the weekend. Pratt, Cannon and Maswanisa. Nelson and then two goalkeepers, Ward and Stolarczyk. For Millwall, the subs, McNamara, Hutchinson, Nisbet, Mitchell, Fleming and Longman. It's only the second game all season that Zian Fleming hasn't started. Amaku Esse and the veteran Bartosz Piewkowski. The referee tonight is Keith Stroud, Leicester in all blue, and Millwall in their change kit of white shirts and black shorts. Well, Leicester's home form has been pretty impressive this season, but they have lost twice, beaten here by Hull, and also live on TalkSport 2 by Leeds United. Millwall's away record much, much better than their home form. It is their form at the den this season that has them in their precarious position in the table. Away from home, they've been pretty tidy. Well, before the game starts, the Leicester players take the knee. Millwall's counterparts standing respectfully. And it will be the Foxes that will get us underway. They're kicking from right to left in this first half. And very much a back three as far as Leicester are concerned, even from the kickoff, lining up with uh, Cody on the right, Vestergaard in the middle of the three, and uh, that fast, the Belgian on the left with uh, Pereira just dropping into that midfield position alongside Harry Wink. So uh, an ultra-attacking side 
An ultra-attacking line at 3-2-2-3, Leicester tonight. Yeah, very much so. I think they know that they're going to have the bulk of possession. Millwall only 19th for average possession. About fast, I think, probably is rightfully in that left hand side role left back going into a left center back role i think he's the most versatile really probably the quickest you would say out of himself cody and vestergaard and probably sees himself as a bit of a player as well so he'll probably drive forward and drive into midfield too yeah i think probably he's doing a fair bit of heavy lifting there i think he definitely <laughs> sees himself as a bit of a player and so he should uh, because as uh, cultured ball playing set of halves go he is right up there and there's certainly a Premier League quality player as the vast majority of his Leicester teammates are as well free kick to Millwall which they will take inside the centre circle we've got a minute behind us here on TalkSport 2 Jim Bradford and Dean Ashton talking you through the action tonight Leicester starting on a run of 12 wins in the last 15 league games and they've won 6 out of the last 7 here with a magnificent defensive record during that time Millwall three defeats in four only one win in their last ten the ball stood up towards the edge of the penalty area but he was hung in the air towards Cooper the referee had spotted an infringement I don't think against Cooper but the whistle has gone and it's a free kick that Leicester will take on the edge of their own penalty area a couple of minutes gone here on TalkSport 2 still nil now that's a little bit soft that's going to make it very difficult for Millwall to be uh, to be a threat from set plays if things like that are, are pulled up uh, Leicester trying to break forward very quickly down the right flank. It was uh, an excellent early ball uh, down the uh, touchline. Slightly overhit. That's a good uh, chase. Well, it was unlucky that he couldn't quite bring it under clean control. That'll be a throw that the Lions will take. Level the edge of their own penalty area. It's uh, Harding that has uh, thrown it forward. Now the Lions able to bring it down in the midfield and trying to release Brooke Norton Cuffey down the right-hand side. Norton Cuffey, who's on loan from Arsenal, had a couple of very impressive loan spells last season as well. One at Coventry and the other at Rotherham. He's got good pace. He's got a lot of miles on the clock as well for a teenager. Nearly 90 senior games behind him already. And he's won a throw here, which is going to be taken uh, by Ryan Leonard. Hurled up the line by Leonard, flicked on by Bradshaw. What more's going to get there? Investigate stamps it away, but it's out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the Lions' right hand side down by the Leicester corner flag. Yeah, I think Joe Edwards will be really pleased with the way that his team have started. And you know, you, it can go two of what uh, it can go one of two ways. You can either just sit back and just completely concede, or you can be pre be pretty brave. And I think with the way that they're set up, certainly with what more closer to Bradshaw, I think they are going to be brave this evening. So it's a long throw. Hurled in towards the corner of the six-yard box, flicked on by Wallace, but it'll just drop down on the edge of the six, and Hermanson's able to come out, good clean pair of hands, and bowls it out quickly for Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Left-footed crossfield pass from him, changing the line of attack, and getting Fatou forward down that right-hand side. Just play back towards the edge of the centre circle, and Didi and Winks linking up the play. Fast has it now, and with a mop of curly hair. He's played inside the centre circle where Ricardo Pereira plays it in towards indeed he closed down very quickly and Wallace was able to knock it away Savile then will go back to the edge of his own penalty area where Cooper drops it off at the feet of Leonard and then Norton Cuffey just caught in possession Dewsbury Hall trying to get towards the byline he's going to get there ahead of Leonard a challenge from the Millwall defender got it half clear Norton Cuffey could do the rest but Leicester pushing up from halfway will win the seconds with Fast and now Cody finds Ndidi and Leicester will be able to push forward again Ricardo Pereira playing it out to the right hand side another opportunity for Leicester to try and deliver ball in towards the near post and it was attacked there by Patson Dacca who scored on his first start under Maresca at the weekend uh, Vestergaard gets it all the way back to his goalkeeper and Amanson's got all the time in the world to be able to knock it forward. They're all actually playing with a back five, uh, with uh, Norton Cuffey dropping in pretty much as a, a right back. He play a lot of his junior football at Arsenal as a, a right back, but he's played as a, a right back and a right winger in this loan spell with uh, the Lions. Wallace on the left, and then Leonard. Cooper and Harding the three set of halves for Millwall so they're pretty much going 5-2-3 at times but obviously 5-4-1 when they haven't got the ball yeah I think that's right out of possession Norton Cuffey coming back I think that is important that left hand side Dewsbury Hall for me 
is the best player in the championship and the way he drifts into those positions and then leaves Mavadidi usually 1v1 with the fullback they don't want that so Norton Cuffey got an important role there to get back and help out Leonard I'm not doubting you but just underlining that statement he's the best player oh, in the championship for me absolutely I think he's a wonderful wonderful talent the only thing I think he can improve on still is probably physically I think he can still get a little bit stronger with that upper body strength once he does I mean, I, it's the time of season, isn't it, where teams will be looking at, at players that have started this championship season well, and he's one of those, I'm sure plenty of Premier League sides will be looking at him. Uh, well, the first championship goal of the night has been scored at Carrow Road. It's Norwich 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0. Uh, Borja Sainz scoring that goal for the Canaries, who've lost three of the last four at home, but got their noses in front tonight. They're in action, of course, against Ipswich in the old Farn Derby at the weekend. It's Saturday and it's live on TalkSport 2 and Dean amongst those talking through the action from a purely neutral standpoint of course Cody knocking it forward out to the right hand touchline challenge is flying in and a free kick's uh, given Leicester's way there are uh, a couple of poor challenges within the space of a, about three seconds yeah I think it's Ndidi who's come off worse I think it's Fatou who was challenged and then oh, no it's Pereira actually which just not used to seeing him in that right back position he spends so much time in midfield that it's rare that he then drifts back into a a right back position Ricardo Pereira who's another one of those players that missed a lot of football through injury he's got the armband on and he's having a terrific season who looks like he's enjoying himself in the championship as you should it, it shouldn't be a case of heads down because you've been relegated it should be heads up because it's a real opportunity to play and to win football matches that was George Honeyman that was the perpetrator of that challenge just a little ticking off from Keith Stroud who's got a quick return here he was in charge of Leicester's win over Sunderland on this ground about five six weeks ago and has taken charge of the Lions so albeit in defeat uh, once already this season as well. We played eight minutes and we haven't had an opportunity worthy of the name so far. Leicester with the majority of possession. Uh, Norwich leading 1-0, the only goal in the championship so far tonight as the ball is played down the Leicester left. Uh, Mavadidi uh, retreating from an offside position. Uh, didn't get back quickly enough and the flag is up against him. Free kick that uh, George Savile will take. Uh, in fact, it's going to be left for uh, Ryan Leonard to take on this right-hand side. Yeah, Millwall's away form, the seventh best in the division. So that's playoff form away from home. They only lost three of the ten that they play, but their form at home is the worst in the division. Uh, that's where it has been going wrong for them so far this campaign. But they've got a puncher's chance tonight against the Leicester side who have been beaten here twice this season by Hull and Leeds to the three defeats that they've suffered in this championship campaign so far. But they've won all but one of the rest of the games. Ball headed for by Yannick Vestergaard. Then brought down by Dewsbury Hall. He's trying to ride the challenge which came in from Savile. Uh, he's won a throw which will be taken on the uh, Leicester left-hand side with nine minutes gone. Early today, Manchester City are winning by three goals to two. Calvin Phillips, the man that got the winner, away to uh, Red Star Belgrade. And the other championship, no, Champions League game that has uh, already taken place today. Leipzig. The oh. young boys 2-1 as Millwall play it inside the penalty area and they've scored. What a start. It's a sensational goal. Tom Bradshaw's really struggled in front of goal this season. Just a one for him, but he's made up for that in sensational style. The travelling Lions fans away to our left-hand side jubilant as Tom Bradshaw puts Millwall ahead against second place Leicester. The ball just whipped him from the left-hand side. Wallace doing well. And then a little flick header from Bradshaw as he made a darting near post run. Got goal side of Vestergaard and just helped Wallace's cross in past the goalkeeper. Brilliant start from Millwall. They lead 1-0. Yeah, shock here. And i tell you what, Duncan Watmore has made something out of nothing. It was just a flick on from Wallace down that left-hand side. 
Watmore had no right to win it. He did. He then laid it back to Wallace. And in that chance, then Honeyman had made a really clever run, actually. Just maybe taken the eye line of Vestergaard, which meant then Bradshaw could make a really clever run. I mean, there's no way in the world Bradshaw should beat Vestergaard in terms of height to that ball. But it was a clever run. He was in front of the centre-back. And all it needed, because of the pace of the ball, was just a little glance. Just guide that in towards the back post. It was glorious from Bradshaw, exactly what he needed to do. No chance for Hermanson, and it's a surprise 1-0 lead. Well, it's exactly what he needed to do, and exactly what he needed, because he was last season's top scorer with 17, but he'd only scored once all season, the third goal in the 3-0 win against Rotherham. Just one goal in 20 appearances. But he's made up for that with a potentially very significant one. Uh, greeted with jubilation by the uh, Millwall fans here and undoubtedly by the Ipswich fans at home listening on. Less than nil, Millwall won, but a long, long way to go. They have come back from 1-0 down on a couple of occasions already this season. They beat Coventry here and won at Swansea, having conceded the first goal. Uh, but they're going to have to win this one the hard way. Fast has done really well to keep the ball in on the left-hand touchline. Rolls it down for Mavadidi. It's put out of play by Leonard. For a throw that is uh, taken quickly to Valfast. Dealey trying to help it on. Big handball shout against Harding. Nothing given. Opportunity for Duncan Watmore to make his way forward. And he's found Bradshaw, corner of the penalty area. Bradshaw standing it up towards the far post where Wallace is arriving. But he couldn't get any purchase on the header. Nods it into the ground. And it's comfortably claimed by Hermanson. But less than other in a game here, Dean. Oh, they certainly do. It's another great break. As Harding is surely going to be booked for that challenge on Fatou. He is indeed. No, just going back to that break, it was ex again, it was Watmore. He's a threat, isn't he? Still got, still got that pace that he's always had. Driving away, Bradshaw on the right-hand side. He stands it up for Wallace to go and attack it. And I tell you what, Cody does brilliantly. Because Cody knows he's probably going to get beat because he's hanging there. He's not got a run at the ball, and Wallace has. But he just does enough almost to shove himself into Wallace as he tries to head it, which means he just can't get the power on the header. Clever defending from Connor Cody. Leicester then breaking quickly. Harding with the foul on uh, Fatuu. First player to have his name taken. Millwall's disciplinary record, actually, is uh, exemplary. I just uh, ask you to think of a number. How many games do you think they've played in the league since they last had a player sent off? Just let you uh, contemplate that for a couple of minutes. Honeyman ends up with the ball at his feet, but Savile has uh, fouled fast. And it's a free kick inside the centre circle that will be taken uh, by Leicester. 13 minutes gone. Millwall leading by a goal to nil. Norwich won Sheffield Wednesday nil remains the only other goal in the championship so far. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the... Uh, games in the FA Cup, the National League South, the uh, Scottish Championship as well tonight, and of course the Champions League, where the games will be underway very shortly. Dewsbury Hall, played down towards Mavadidi. Mavadidi on the edge of the penalty area, nice reverse ball in from him. Dewsbury Hall taking towards the byline, standing up across, just couldn't quite get it over Sarkic who was able to claim at the second attempt. Yeah, Norton Cuffey in that right back role, but I tell you what, Mavadidi just went past him like he wasn't there. It's just that little shimmy and that explosive first three yards from Mavadidi. Very, very difficult to stop. Lovely little reverse pass into Dewsbury Hall. It's always in that left channel. And he's trying to do the right thing in standing it up and over Sarkic. But the goalkeeper's done well. He's come right beyond the near post, giving all that space if it goes over his head for it to be scored in into his net. But did that because he knew he could then get the height and grab it. Uh, those are the thoughts of the former England international striker Dean Ashton here at the King Power Stadium tonight. Less than ill, Millwall won. This is the first league meeting of the two sides for 10 years. Leicester did the double over the Lions in that last championship season. Although Millwall have knocked Leicester out of the FA Cup since then with a last-minute goal from Sean Cummings. Uh, a cup shock which put the Lions a quarter-final tie some seven seasons ago. But Jake Cooper played in that game got himself sent off but Millwall down to 10 men still won it fast play through the midfield to Ricardo back for Yannick Vestergaard 
Vestergaard, who's one yellow card short of a two-game ban. He's already had nine cautions this season. And so his tackles will certainly be watched closely by Keith Stroud tonight. Mavadidi back for Fass. Fass is five yards inside his own half, actually retreats into uh, an even deeper position before laying it back for Vestergaard. Cody now can bring it forward. Connor Cody, who's making only his fifth start of the season since his summer move from Wolves. Vestergaard has it, controls it with his right foot, turns it briskly down towards Fass. Dewsbury Hall showing for the ball, has it played into feet. And then it's laid back for Fass again. It's just interesting with how compact Millwall are making their defensive shape. You know, from the halfway line, they're only giving within the Leicester attacking half they're only giving them half of it you know they're keeping quite a high line I think as players you've got to try and figure out a way you know make decisions that are going to help the side and if I'm one of the, the front three and they're keeping that high line I'm not just going to keep coming to the ball and, and making it really tight Leicester on the front foot again here chance to play back for Dacker who's waiting near the penalty spot it was cleared Wallace Wax it further away for Millwall. Vestergaard, the tallest man on the pitch, but still misjudged the bounce, which almost went over his head. And Winks rescues it, shows great faith in his goalkeeper by firing an aerial ball back some 50 yards to Hermansen. Came outside his penalty area, controlled it on his solar plexus, dropped it onto his left foot, and very neatly got Leicester going again. Wilfred and Dede in possession, back towards Winks, and he's going back to that point you were making, Dean. Leicester having to find ways to to figure out how to break this deep line back five down but when they can get the ball into wide positions as they did there there's often space for the likes of Dakar if they peel away towards the edge of the penalty area yeah exactly and the the, the joy that they're having is out wide with Fatuu and Mavadidi when they're 1v1 against their fullback because they're excellent dribblers and they then draw another Millwall player across but I just think with the front three when it's condensed in that manner and your centre-backs want to play it into your midfield players Winks and Deedee and Drewsby Hall you have to then try and stretch the defence so you have to make runs in behind that you're probably not going to get the ball but it means then your midfield players have a bit more space to get hold of it Honeyman as Campbell did well to cut out a Leicester attack and uh, Bradshaw will lay it back for Norton Cuffey deeper from him to Leonard Leonard into the uh, feet of George Savile the Northern Ireland international Cooper's got it now a play to his left hand side for Wes Harding the one time Birmingham defender who arrived having been released from Rotherham in the summer now Leonard playing it forward with the outside of the right boot but he just couldn't quite spear it into Bradshaw's run and he goes out of play for a Leicester throw first Champions League goal of the night Royal Antwerp 1 Barcelona 0 which I don't think too many will have seen coming inside the opening couple of minutes uh, Arthur Vermeeren scoring that goal which is academic uh, by and large Antwerp already out Barcelona already through uh, Barcelona win the group unless they lose that game Shakhtar Donetsk win theirs away to Porto and there's a seven goal swing ain't gonna happen uh, but famous moment for Royal Antwerp tonight scoring at home to Barcelona inside the opening couple of minutes nil nil everywhere else we'll keep a close eye of course on Newcastle United's prospects of qualification from the Champions League and over on TalkSport right now Adrian Durham at St James's Park with Steve Harmison uh, talking through the action reports on all the goals as they happen and keeping you abreast of all the pertinent details uh, tonight here in the East Midlands it's still 1-0 to Millwall after that 10th minute opener from Tom Bradshaw fast sending one over the top too high for Patson Dacker and it rolls through for goalkeeper Matthias Sarkic and uh, the Montenegrin will uh, take a couple of touches and wait for players to push up field uh, Millwall already and this is uh, as I often say it's an observation not a criticism because I would want my goalkeeper to do the same but they're already indulging in a little bit of time management as well they might <laughs> yeah I don't I don't blame them no I neither think, do I I think, I think but they've come with a plan genuinely come with a with a decent plastic good ball and it is Honeyman finding Bradshaw gets the shot in and he's side netting only real chance really great pass from Honeyman takes it on the back foot sees Bradshaw makes that run between Fass and Vestergaard just plays it into his path he's got the beating of Vestergaard for pace 
foot and he's trying to say to the referee, Keith Stroud, he's trying to say that I've been pushed as I'm about to shoot. Well, yeah, that's what centre-backs do when they can't quite make the tackle. They just shove you just as you're about to take the strike. And Vestergaard's done well because he's put him off and it meant he put it into the side netting rather than testing Hermanson. Good defending or naive from Bradshaw? A bit of both. Lennon heads away as Leicester try and get a, a high aerial ball into the flight path of Dewsbury Hall. Mavadidi picking up the loose ball, plays it behind square for Vout Fast. Now towards Harry Winks. Winks through the midfield for Dewsbury Hall again. Dewsbury Hall working it round the corner and it was laid off by Dacker back towards him, but a poor challenge came in on Dacker and a yellow card is shown to Cooper. And that's two of the three Millwall centre-halves who've been booked inside the opening 20 minutes. I don't think he needs to do it, because Dacker has got to beat him, and then he's got to beat Harding, who's behind him, and Leonard's right there to his right-hand side. So you don't need to dive in. You, you're not going to win that there. So just keep, you, just stand him up. You're too physical for him. Make him play it backwards, and you've done your job. Now you're on a yellow card. You've got a long part of the game to play and you're going to have to now be careful. I was talking earlier about Millwall's excellent disciplinary record. I haven't had a player sent off this season. All the last one, all the one before. You've got to go back to January 2021 for the last time they had a player sent off in a league game. It's the longest streak of any of the 92 at the moment. This is the 138th game <laughs> since they had a man sent off in the league. I'm glad I didn't say my 52 then. Now the ball clipped in by Dewsbury Hall, fast with a header, comfortably claimed by Sarkic. Got the dip on it, but uh, Sarkic able to take a step across to his left-hand side and claim it pretty comfortably. Yeah, difficult to get the power on it. It was more of a clipped ball in, wasn't it, from Keenan Dewsbury Hall, because it was a more central free kick. He's just tried to sort of curl it in with a little bit of softness. And then Fast has to try and get the power on the header, which he, he ultimately can't because he's being challenged against. And Sarkic actually just gathers it neatly. Early goal in the 8 o'clock kickoff on Teesside. Middlesbrough leading Hull by a goal to nil. Their top scorer, Emmanuel Latilath, with his seventh goal of the season for Borough, who, like their opponents coming into the game, have lost two on the bounce. But they lead tonight. Middlesbrough won Hull nil. Good ball out towards Fatu on the right-hand side of the uh, penalty area. Just trying to drop his shoulder and get round Wallace. Now uh, Wallace was able to steer it away. And it should be easily cleared up the uh, left-hand touchline into the feet of George Honeyman. Honeyman doing well, turning it forward. What more chasing. A goalkeeper with great anticipation. Hermanson came out and swept up. Must admit, I thought he was offside. No VAR, of course, and the flag stayed down. It did look as though Watmore was offside. Enzo Maresca certainly thought so, and is arguing with the fourth official Scott Oldham about it. But there was no flag, and they got it again. Norton Cuffey definitely onside as the ball is played in towards that near post area. Come back for Honeyman, takes the touch, can't get himself into a shooting position. Might be able to set up Savile. Dacker's back defending, Savile just caught him. And the free kick goes Leicester's way on the edge of the D. They've taken it quickly. And try to get Fatuu forward, he's been blocked off, and it's another free kick to Leicester, this one near a halfway. We're just past the midway stage of the first half on TalkSport 2, and it's Leicester nil, Millwall 1. Yeah, they're going for the full set, Wallace has now got himself a yellow card, so that leaves just Leonard and Norton Cuffey without one. It was really clever from Fatuu, great little bit of improvisation, little nutmeg on Wallace. And he just dragged him back. But they've been a real threat, actually, Millwall. And I think that'll really please Joe Edwards. It's that bravery when you have the ball that you're going to have to commit players forward. You might leave yourself open, but it gives you a chance then of creating something. And that's a couple of chances now they've created from good positions. Uh, yep, Murray Wallace in the book. He was, actually, the last the Millwall player to be sent off in the league game. Eh? Uh, the ball played forward over Dewsbury Hall's head, down towards Mavadidi. Left-hand side of the penalty area. Couple of step-overs. Got past Norton Cuffey. Cross comes in. It's half cleared. Harry Winks will pick it up. He stands it up towards Dacker. Really well headed away by Cooper. And then a chance for Duncan Watmore to try and bring it clear up the Millwall left. And he's done well. Really good ball retention. Savile. It's a good press from Leicester. He's forced Leonard to play it quickly ahead of Norton Cuffey, who, in the end, is forced to concede a throw. Leicester did very well out of possession there. Yeah, they did. 
That is a, a feature of their game. It's why defensively they've been so good, actually, is because they don't let the opposition really settle on the ball. The forward players are hard-working and intelligent in the way that they press as soon as they've lost the ball. But again, Duncan Watmore is a real outlet for, for Millwall. Great ball carrier. And especially with Ricardo Pereira out of that position, as soon as he gets it one more, he looks to drive into that open space. So Cody maybe just needs to go across to that right-hand side a little bit more when Millwall have the ball. 25 minutes in. And the high-flying Foxes still trailing the lowly Lions. And Tom Bradshaw's goal 15 minutes ago. A couple of other Champions League goals tell you about. Atletico Madrid leading Lazio 1-0. Antoine Griezmann's 13th of the season. They're already through. They win the group. If they get a positive result tonight against Lazio and they lead 1-0, Porto leads Shakhtar by a goal to nil. They're not through yet, but they will qualify if they avoid defeat. And they lead with Galeno's goal. Still nil-nil in Newcastle's game and the other game in that group, Dortmund, against PSG. 1-0 to Millwall here. Leicester looking for a response. Patrick chasing a ball that was over, hit down the inside, right channel. And it goes out of play for a goal kick. But defensively, Millwall have been really sound so far. It's been an impressive performance from Joe Edwards' men. Yeah, I mean, a feature of playing Leicester is you have to be so concentrated throughout the whole game because that all they're waiting for is one of you to switch off in that back line. They haven't so far. They've kept a very, very good high line. Almost tried to tempt Leicester into that pass, actually, that indeed he just tried to make but overhit it. But that's where the space is. If they can make those run in, runs in behind Leicester, there's so much space there. I'm really yet to see Mavadidi or Fatou make that run inside the fullback, or even Juice Behold and Ndidi make a run beyond Dakar, who probably needs a little bit of help with the three centre backs all around him. A possession so far, 76-24 in Leicester's favour, but Millwall have had 75% of the attempts, and of course, the only one that's gone in, Honeyman, laying it back for Leonard, Leonard's ball forward, hit about fast, but breaks Savile's way. Savile can find Harding. Uh, Wes Harding had the opportunity to bring it forward over halfway. He's asked a lot of Duncan Watmore with that ball forward. I mean, he's quick, but he's not as quick as that. And Leicester can work it safely back for Hermanson. He will play it out of the penalty area for Winks. And now Ricardo Pereira can bring it forward again for Leicester, who continue to trail. They do. Honeyman's got an important role, a key role in the side. He's trying to just do that work in between Ricardo Pereira and Winks you know a key to Leicester's play is Ricardo going in and making those two deep line midfield players that can get on the ball and turn and Honeyman who's got just so much energy and and work ethic is doing that role very very well and just stopping Winks getting on the ball who's so influential for Leicester Leonard clears fast returns Harry Winks able to help it on Dakar claiming he was pulled back as he uh, tried to uh, protect the ball. And Cooper was the uh, Millwall defender involved. Campbell ends up on the deck for Millwall. The ball goes out of play and it's a Leicester throw. Plymouth away at Queen's Park Rangers tonight. Down to 10 men. Dan Scar sent off. It's still nil-nil. Fatu coming in off the right flank. Plays it back for Cody. Cody to his left-hand side for Yannick Vestergaard. Vout fast, the uh, other centre half making his way forward. He's only six or seven yards outside the penalty area when he tries a little give and go with Dewsbury Hall. Couldn't squeeze it quite back through to him. The uh, Mustachio midfielder goes out of play for a throw, which Mavadidi has taken quickly. Fast for Winks. Wilfred and Didi. Okay, for Daka, no chance. Cooper could clear. Now Honeyman flicking it forward. Winks has steered it back into the danger area. It was a good run forward from Watmore. Helped on by Campbell. Bradshaw back to him. Now out towards Duncan Watmore. Right hand side of the area. He lets fly. It's deflected away. It's Vestergaard and goes out for a corner. Yeah, they've been really good at that. Because Leicester exposed when they do lose the ball. Because they allow Ricardo Pereira to go. And if they bypass him, it can be three against three as it was there. They worked it really well into Bradshaw and then into Watmore. He was a little bit greedy. I think it was the, the right option in the end. There wasn't an easy pass to a teammate. And it opened up for him to strike. And he just hit it against the back of Vestergaard's calves and out for a corner where, again, they can be a threat. We're half an hour in. 
And the Lions looking to double their advantage. Plenty of movement in towards the near post. It's hit very deep for Cooper. Cooper heading it back towards the edge of the penalty area, but it didn't get to Campbell. Half cleared. Norton Cuffey can pick it up. First touch not the best. He had loads of time to rescue it. And then his cross also too deep. And that's easily picked up by Hermanson. The game in the Scottish Championship tonight. Struggling our broke. Lost seven in a row. They're 1-1 at home to Wraith, who are unbeaten in 11. Now, Wraith taking the lead. Our both have just equalised from the penalty spot with Jermaine Hilton, their joint top scorer. This is six of the campaign. 1-1 one, one there. 1-0 one, to Millwall here at Leicester. Now, if it stays that way, the Foxes will be two points behind Ipswich. You've got 51. Leicester 49 at the moment. Leads after their defeat to Sunderland yesterday, 41. And then Southampton, 38. But with a game in hand, the Saints in action away at Coventry tonight that's currently nil nil so Southampton up to 39 this thing's down but still 10 adrift of Leicester even if the Foxes were to lose this here's Fass finding Dewsbury Hall back for Wout Fass again everybody apart from Hermanson inside the half of the field that Millwall are defending Fatou doing well getting the better of Murray Wallace Checks back onto his left foot, gets himself into a shooting position, took a deflection, which uh, spun it into the side, netting past the diving Sarkic, and out of play for Leicester's first corner. Oh, he's been excellent, hasn't he? The, uh, the young man on the right-hand side, Fatawu, brilliant take with his left foot, and you can just tell Wallace knew he couldn't challenge him, because he's on a yellow card. And then he jinks inside onto that left foot, takes the strike on, takes the deflection, and he wins the corner. Yeah, he's a good player. And the young Garnier on loan from Sporting Lisbon still. Only 19. In comes the corner for Dakar. Didn't get hold of it. That's a really good chance for Leicester. The best they've had. It came in towards the right-hand side of the penalty area. Trajectory in towards the penalty spots. Dakar's made the run to get on Mavadidi's delivery. Nobody's picked him up. And he scuffed it with his right foot behind his left. And it goes out of play for a goal kick. Oh, it is the classic. We've seen it down the years, haven't we? The anderton Sheringham corner. Anderton playing that in. Sheringham peeling from the back post all the way around. Everyone drags everyone in towards the goal. It leaves it open for Sheringham to score. Sadly, it was Mavadidi and Dakar. And it went horribly wrong because Dakar ended up hitting his heel. He's just trying to side foot that in towards the goal. Hits his heel and just goes horribly, horribly wide. It's a great chance. So it remains 1-0 to Millwall. Sheffield Wednesday have equalised at Norwich with a goal from Bailey Ty Kadamatri. Norwich 1, Sheffield Wednesday 1. It's fast. Inside the centre circle, Ricardo Pereira and Didi making a run ahead of him. Wilfred indeed just playing the way that he was facing. Back for Cody. Cody, who is so used to seeing his excellent array of diagonal passing. And just gave for Norton Cuffey a chance. He's a tall man for a fullback, Brooke Norton Cuffey. And he headed it away easily from Mavadidi. Out of play for a throw that Leicester have taken quickly. The Vestergaard across to Cody. 12 to go to half time. And Millwall still lead. Good run down the right-hand side of the area from Wilfred Ndidi this time. Cross towards the far post. It'll break for Mavadini. All good for him to control as he sat up sharply and hit his chest. And Norton Cuffey used that to be able to whack it away right-footed and out of play for a throw. Fast taking that quickly. Goes back for Yannick Vestergaard. Cody will play it forward. And then get it back again from Wilfred Ndidi. Starting to have more and more influence, isn't he? Fatu on the game. Cut inside onto his left foot. Reverse pass all the way down the line for Ndidi, who's starting to make runs from mid that midfield area, and he needs to. That's the way you've got to combat a high line, is with that midfield runner. And he just made another one there, but the pass wasn't forthcoming. He's waiting into the area here, and spoons it over the bar. Fatu breaking again down the right-hand side. Pulled back for Ndidi, who made a run and then stopped. And the back line just carried on going. So he had a yard of space. But he got his right foot underneath it, scooped it over the bar, unable to score what would have been his fifth of the season. Oh, Wallace is having a, a torrid evening now against Fatu. Just played out towards Fatu. He just beat him for pace. He just pushed it down the line, beat Wallace for pace, got his head up, saw that clever run that you mentioned there, that whole... The, the run that had just been held by Ndidi, pulled it back, just needs the final bit of quality, composure, and it wasn't. He leaned back, he scooped it over like a shovel foot, 
over the top of the bar and he's shown better quality than that this season indeed he Lions try and bring it forward. The uh, referee has uh, halted play. I think he thought he saw a handball from Bradshaw. Uh, let's take the free kick quickly. Championship scores like this. Cardiff nil, Birmingham nil, Coventry nil, Southampton nil. Leicester nil, Millwall one here. Norwich one, Sheffield Wednesday one. QPR nil, 10 man Plymouth nil. And in the 8 o'clock kickoff, Middlesbrough lead Hull by a goal to nil. Leicester bring it forward down the right flank. That's the area that they uh, tend to gravitate their attacking down. And they've got another corner. They want a penalty. The Leicester players and fans and Didi racing across to the referee. They thought that Fatou was fouled. It was just a heavy challenge that won the ball and it's gone out of play for a corner. Oh, this is close. This is really close. He's taken a big chance, Wes Harding. Not only is he on a yellow card, but Fatou with a great bit of skill. And it's a penalty. It's as simple as that. He just thinks he's going to get there. Fatou actually, you know, just pokes it out of play. He's not going to get it, but he gets there first. And Harding doesn't. It was a difficult angle for the referee as Cody gets a yellow card for what he must have said to the referee. But Cody probably had a great angle of it. And I don't think Keith Stroud had a good angle and probably felt that Harding got a touch and he didn't. It was brilliant from Fatou. None of the Millwall players were complaining that a corner's been given instead of the goal kick. But it might have been. Ball swung in. Bradshaw heads it away. Leicester players again appealing. Fast racing towards the referee with his arms outstretched. Millwall have been able to get the ball away. Leicester win it back inside the centre circle. And they get it back to the goalkeeper. Not easy for the referee. That no, position, not at all. Not, not at all. I mean, obviously, thankfully no VAR in the championship. Because that, obviously for Leicester it would be good because they would have a penalty now but for the referee to make that decision when Fatou gets the tiniest of touches away from Harding and it looks as if where the ball travels that Harding has made a good challenge so so difficult for the referee yeah absolutely because it was the touch from Fatou that would have deceived the referee he would have seen the, the movement on the ball it's changed tra uh, trajectory and so he assumes the defenders made it into a fair challenge gives the corner that well, should have been a penalty that should be handball it is Honeyman heading it straight onto the uh, the arm of Campbell and it's a free kick in a really good position for Leicester plum dead centre about 10 yards outside the penalty area uh, Leicester have a player down injured and Fatou just being held back to his feet it's not going to need any treatment well, this is just about position A maybe wants slightly more angle on this I suppose three or four yards to the left or right because it is very central uh, we're just seeing another replay Dean of the penalty incident Harding sliding in he's not got the ball he's so fortunate no it's a brilliant bit of skill a little flip flap from Fatou to take him away from Harding the real difficult part of this for the referee is that the touch that Fatou gets is directly in line with where Harding would have kicked it when he's made the challenge and that's the difficulty for the referee if if that ball properly changes direction I think it it makes the decision a lot easier so I certainly don't blame the referee for that such a difficult one to call yep absolutely this Vestergaard is going to take this is he uh, there's not going to be any panache this is going to be pace and power if indeed it is Vestergaard who runs up towards the ball, smacks it right-footed, and Sarkic can make a save. Actually, there wasn't enough pace or power. He just tried the little loopy one over the wall. Uh, it was creeping into the bottom left-hand corner, but Sarkic had plenty of time to shuffle across, get down behind his wall and make the save. <laughs> this is magnificent from Bestacar. You're right. He looks as if he's going to go up and just thump it. And he goes up with a little knuckleball, Ronaldo-style technique up and over the wall oh, hang on i've got ronaldo's lawyers on uh they're they've asked me to point out that that was not ronaldo style uh I'm because sure, i'm sure he i'm sure he had his legs um wide and he'd done the big chest puff best of guard and then the straight run up the knuckleball technique and whether they would have been a sue celebration we will never know it, was, it wasn't bad you know it was actually decent from best of guard just without the power and Sarkis making a relatively comfortable save. His clean sheet still intact. He's had a couple uh, since he's moved to Millwall from Wolves. He returned to the side on Saturday after three months out. First choice keeper, the uh, Montenegrin international. 
And here's Vestergaard again for Leicester. Five to go to half time. And it's Leicester nil. Millwall one. And Foxes, I rate that they didn't get a penalty, which uh, we felt that they deserved. Vestergaard down towards Fars. And Fars will be able to bring it forward. Plenty of credit due to Millwall. This. I'm sure their best performance under Joe Edwards so far. That's notwithstanding that they won one of the games that they played under him 4-0. They've been excellent tonight. So resilient. But there have been a few signs in the last five or six minutes that they're beginning to creep defensively. No way through for the Foxes yet. It's the Millwall fans that you can hear. The Vestigar down towards Fass. Four to go to half time here on TalkSport 2. Referee takes evasive action. For a fast ball play to the right for Ricardo Pereira. Cody's invited forward. He goes out towards Fatou on the right. The Garnain clipping it in. Left footed Jewsbury Hall attacking it. Lennon heads it high up in the air. Bounces awkwardly for Dakar and Cooper. Dakar pokes it up in the air again. It's half clear. Fatou will pick it up. Right hand side of the area. Tried a no look ball down towards Ndidi. Wallace gets it away. Cody yep. can pick it up on the right hand touch line and lay it back for Vestergaard. Now Vestigar bringing it forward again here for Leicester and now finding Harry Winks. Again, Fatu, I've been so impressed. He's picked the right option, went to drive at the fullback, went to just jink inside and play that ball in. It was a really dangerous ball. Keenan Jewsbury Hall, as he has done all season, a bit like Ndidi when it's on the opposite side, getting in the box. So important that you go and join your centre forward and just try and outnumber the opposition. Cody goes back for Vestigar. Vestergaard getting it forward. Ricardo Pereira back to the tall Danish defender who's had an extraordinary renaissance under Enzo Maresca, having been surplus to requirements here last season. Leonard clears. Picked up by Fass. Honeyman tried to win it back. Ricardo Pereira very quickly got in between Honeyman and the ball to win it back for Leicester. Possession still in the mid-70s. And still the scoreline remains 1-0 to Millwall. Back for Cody. Cody 20 yards outside the penalty area. Vout Fass has it. Fass. Down towards Mavadidi. Former Arsenal trainee. Taking on Norton Cuffey. Left footed ball in towards the near post. But Sarkic got his angles right. Can make a collapsing save onto the ball. And he'll be in no hurry to get it upfield. With two to go to half time. It's less than nil. Millwall one. Here's Dean Ashley. They've just dropped deeper, haven't they? It's still condensed from Millwall, but they had a higher line early on in the game. They're dropping deeper and deeper. And now the edge of the box is basically becoming their line for the defence. And it means there is that space. If they switch it quickly, Leicester, that's where the space is for their two wide players who have both been decent. Fatou in particular. Still plenty of time for the Foxes to get back on level terms before the break. Jewsbury Hall. Good little one-two. Gives them the opportunity to try and take on Ryan Leonard. And Leonard will get to the right-hand touchline and be able to get it away. He goes past Vestigard and all the way back to his goalkeeper, Hermanson. Hermanson actually leaving it for Vestigard to play. And then Cody will knock it forward. 90 seconds to go to half-time. A night that's seen uh, very few goals in the championship so far. The uh, most significant one here, scored by Tom Bradshaw, ten minutes in. And the Lions have used it as a, a very solid platform uh, to build what will be a very impressive away result if they can put it off. Harry Winks, finding Ndidi, Ricardo Pereira, Dakar trying to take it on, but couldn't get past Cooper. He ended up going down inside the penalty area. I'm sure that was of his own volition. Now, they should have had a penalty earlier. I don't think they should have had one for that. Ricardo Pereira knocking it down. Fatou will chase. Hooks his right foot around. He's done well. Dakar attacking it, but Sarkic came out and claimed it. Yeah, again, good defensive play from Cooper. It wasn't a foul at all. Dakar just threw himself, really tried to make a foul out of nothing. And then again, that pace with Fatou against Wallace down the right-hand side. He got there. But again, good goalkeeping. Made sure he was alert. Came out, collected, and his team can reset. Sarkic getting it forward upfield. Mavadidi heading it back to Fass. Fass with the ball forward. And Dakar trying to make a quick run and spin round the back of Cooper, who stood his ground no more than that. And Dakar fell to the ground. 
The loose ball goes all the way through towards Sarkic. Now the fourth official with the numbers ball in hand. How many extra minutes will be prescribed? Just the one. Here's Wilfred and Deedy for Leicester in a much deeper position this time. Finding Vestergaard. Still time for the Foxes to launch one last attack to find an equaliser before the break. Mavadidi trying to knock it past Norton Cuffey and then it goes out of play for a throw. The first half of games this season they've scored 14 and conceded 7 Leicester and the second half they've scored 24 and conceded only 6. They are aside because of the strength in depth that they've got in their squad really because of the amount of possession they have in games. They do tend to come on stronger late in games. They're going to have to here as Leonard takes the throw fast heads it away. And it goes out of play for a throw, and this will be the uh, last action of the first half. Shakhtar have just equalised at uh, Porto in the Champions League. 1-1 there with Sikhan's goal. Campbell, on loan from Luton, playing it for Vestergaard heads it away. Leonard back towards Harding. Harding chests it down, right-footed up and under. Vestergaard got caught by Bradshaw, and the free kick goes Leicester's way. A hand of apology from Bradshaw after the, the hand in the face, which uh, was accidental. Winks has got the ball at his feet, referee looks at his watch, and that will be half time. And Leicester with work to do. Well, here in the East Midlands, Leicester back out for the second half. And 10 of the 11 that started the game for Millwall are back out as well. The one exception, Murray Wallace, is going to be replaced at half time by Danny McNamara. Former England striker Dean Ashton alongside me. No surprise. Uh, you talked a couple of times about the way that uh, Fatu was getting the better of Wallace, who was on a yellow card. So McNamara on for Wallace. Yeah, I mean, I thought that would be the only thought in Joe Edwards' mind, and particularly down that side. Wallace had struggled, and it did feel as if, you know, a red card was pretty inevitable. You would expect the way that Fatu was going past Wallace time and time again. So probably a really good decision, I think. Uh, so Danny McNamara, who hasn't featured for six weeks, comes on. Now we're back underway. Leicester in all royal blue. Millwall in their change kit, white shirts, black shorts, and the Lions kicking from right to left in this second half. Leicester guard's got the ball. Uh, goes back for his goalkeeper. Hermanson will control it. Lay down towards Cody. Uh, Connor Cody with an opportunity to bring it forward. Leicester lining up Hermanson in goal. Cody, Vestergaard and Farsa back three. Pereira and Winks. Then Ndidi and Dewsbury Hall. Fatou Daka and Mavadidi. A front three. A 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three formation. Millwall going five at the back. Sarkic in goal. Norton Cuffey, Leonard, Harding, Cooper. And now McNamara. That back five. The Savile and Campbell in the centre of midfield. Honeyman and Watmore buzzing around Bradshaw up front. Now a chance inside the penalty area. Carlo Pereira pulling it back. Shot on the turn. Brilliantly saved by Sarkic. And Leicester with a side of goal inside the opening seconds of the second half. Really good move. No surprise that Ricardo Pereira was involved. Laying it down on the left-hand side of the box for Wilfred and Didi, who shot on the turn. Well saved by the diving Sarkic. Yeah, it was a turnover of possession for Leicester. And they moved it quickly to Ricardo Pereira who instead of shooting, which I thought he probably should have done, he pulled it back. It was slightly behind Wilfred Ndidi, who then tried to turn and sort of dig it out from behind him. Didn't get the pace he wanted, but still a really good save from Sarkic to his right-hand side. But I just think they've tweaked that midfield area with Winks hold. It's more of a, a diamond in that midfield four with Jusby Hall going into a more of a ten roll. Ndidi going as the left-hand side and Ricardo Pereira as a as a right-hand sided midfield, but probably just to try and get Dewsbury Hall on the ball. And they'll push forward again and win a corner as Mavadidi broke down the left-hand side of the box. They had two corners in the first half, one already in the opening couple of minutes of the second. Dewsbury Hall raced across to offer himself for the short one, but it is going to be played directly inside the penalty area by the look of it. Fatou waiting, wearing 18 on the edge of the penalty area. Vestergaard stands by the penalty spot. Cody is there as well. Harding's got his arms around Cody and Cooper around Vestergaard. Fast on the edge of the six-yard box being detailed by Saville. Plenty of pushing and shoving going on. Referee lets it all pass. And Millwall clear. Goes out towards Dewsbury Hall. 
Left footed ball swung inside the penalty area. Keeper came to meet it. And it's bobbled over him and in. And Leicester are back on level terms. Three minutes into the second half. Yannick Vestergaard, the man that peels away, taking the plaudits. Leicester with the equalising goal. Great start of the second half. 1 1. He's always going to cause problems, isn't he? Yannick Vestergaard, surely. With that height, if he just gets himself into a good position, it's a delicious ball in, by the way, from Dewsbury Hall. And I think it's Patson Dacker that's just in front of Vestergaard. Vestergaard doesn't know a lot about this. This hits his shoulder as he's been dragged by Cooper as well. Flicks off his shoulder. Sarkic has committed himself and got nowhere near him. It floats over the Millwall heads and drops in at the far post. Just the start. Enzo Maresca wanted. Well, he scored at Swansea. It's his only goal in Leicester Colours prior to tonight. Uh, it's not all that he's necessarily going to put on the show reel, as he was turning off balance and the ball just struck his left shoulder, but loops up over the goalkeeper. Counts the same. 1-1 the scoreline, and it's taken Leicester only three minutes of the second period here on Talksport 2 to get themselves back on level terms. Half time at St James in the Champions League. All the details over on Talk Sport for you right now. Newcastle leading and qualifying as things stand right now. Jalinton's goal. And they lead Milan 1-0. Here it's 1-1 between Leicester and Millwall. Harry Winks putting his foot on the ball in the midfield. Pereira for Cody. Fatou making his way forward. Chance for him to try and take on McNamara, but he's uh, laid it back for Cody instead. Winks has got it now. Siphoning it expertly between the lines. Pereira trying to do likewise as Daka made the run. And Pereira wins it back. Good turnover of possession. Makes his way towards the edge of the penalty area. Trying to thread it through. Cooper nearly got the ball caught between his feet, but was able to salvage things and work it back for his goalkeeper. And then as Bill will whack it upfield, Cody can mop up and go back for Hermanson. But it feels as though Leicester really turning the screw now. Such a good record in the second half of games as we were detailing earlier. And they've already scored since half-time and hungry for more. Well, it's just that tweak in midfield. I think it's made the difference so far. Millwall haven't got to grips with exactly where those four midfield players are playing. And it me it's meaning that Winks is starting to get on it. And Didi, Ricardo Pereira, even Drews Behold. What Joe Edwards will be furious about when he watches the goal back is how Keenan Drews Behold is allowed to just get the ball, take it forward four or five yards, with nobody going anywhere near him to close him down. He gets his head up. And then he puts in that wicked delivery that makes it so difficult for his defence. He'll be furious that you haven't got out and closed him down. He's the one player you have to do that with. Well, the last time the two sides met was in the uh, League Cup a couple of seasons ago. Leicester winning that 2-0 with goals from Anamola Lookman and Kelechi Inacho. Inacho not fit, not involved tonight for Leicester. Jamie Vardy in the same boat. Why uh, Dakar is leading the line. Again for the Foxes. Millwall still without uh, Brian and Denore as well, as the ball is played in here, and Dakar makes it 2-1. And it's all about the quality of the cross. Dakar's bit was easy. All he had to do was get a foot to it, and side put it into the net from about a foot out. What a turnaround. Two goals in the first six minutes of the second half. Leicester two, Millwall one, but what a cross. Oh, unbelievable cross from Wilfred and Didi. He switched to that left-hand side of midfield, but again he's making those runs beyond Pats and Dacker, beyond the front line. It's Winks that finds him, Wilfred and Didi. And he's learned from that earlier cross when Sarkic is so far over to that near post. This time he gets the height, flicks it up and over the top of Sarkic. Daka's there, he's got himself away from Cooper. He has got the easiest goal he will ever, ever score. He's about a centimetre out. All he's got to do is let the ball hit him and end up in the back of the net. What a turnaround. I genuinely think... I might have scored that one. Oh, you would. 92nd goal of... Oh, I don't know. 92nd goal of his career. And, as you say, almost certainly the easiest. Certainly the one from closest range. When he made his first start under Maresca on Saturday and scored. He's made his second start under Maresca tonight and has scored. 
Only five goals in 53 games leading up to this week. But two and two for Patson Dacca. And Leicester 2, Millwall 1 is the score. Coventry 1, Southampton 0. It's down the M69 from here. Hadji Wright with his sixth of the season for the Sky Blues. have only lost one out of five. Saints unbeaten in 12. But it's Coventry 1, Southampton 0. And Norwich have taken the lead against Sheffield Wednesday again with Ashley Barnes scoring three minutes into the second half. Norwich 2, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Leicester 2, Millwall 1 here on TalkSport 2. Vestergaard on 48 and Dakar on 52. Ball is back with Batfass to Vestergaard. Play forward into feet of Harry Winks. Ricardo Pereira for Cody. Cody to Winks. Vestergaard will be able to bring it forward. It's all unraveled very quickly for Joe Edwards and the Lions who lost their last two games away from home. They will suffer a fourth defeat in five if it stays this way. With only a two-point advantage above the bottom three at the start of the night. Yeah. I think it it'll say a lot already about the two managers I think Moresca's tipped his hat to Joe Edwards and said fair play that first half you've got it absolutely spot on but he's made a change he's made a slight tweak that's all it's been in that midfield area and it's already led to two goals and that's where Joe Edwards has got to either make a decision to change himself to combat that or not or feel as if what he's been doing is the right thing and that's the that's the tactical challenges that you have as managers now uh, Jewsbury Hall Ricardo Pereira, it's Dakar again in towards Dewsbury Hall, goes down inside the penalty area. Uh, Savile's going to be able to bring it away. He was then fouled by Dakar, and it's a free kick to Millwall. But it's incredible how they look so in control in that first half defensively, Millwall. All of a sudden, it looks like every Leicester player is free. It's easy for them to pass round. I know conceding goals means you lack a bit of confidence from there on out, but still, the change that Moresca's made has meant that Millwall are just not sure now of the positionings of the players. Vestergaard, now towards the Leicester left-hand side, the challenge was ill-conceived by Leonard, Mamadidi has passed him, He's inside the penalty area, faced up by Cooper, ball in towards the near post as he flags it away, goes out of play for a corner. Yeah, yeah I think Leonard, Leonard's, um, he's lucky. He's lucky actually that Mavididi stayed on his feet because he would have then had a, a yellow card as he went diving in, trying to intercept. And Cooper in the end did well just to hold up Mavididi. Leicester looking for a third goal in this second half. Swung it towards Vestergaard again. Better contact. A sliced attempt on goal from Dakar is cleared. Dewsbury Hall with a complete miss kick, which ended up being a sensational pass. Right footed ball inside the box is headed away by Bradshaw. Everybody back behind the ball for Millwall. There is no real out ball. Watmore tried to make one. Leicester won it back. Fatu did well. Feeds it out towards the left hand side of the area where Mavadidi can play in Wilfred and Didi. Back from Mavadidi to Harry Winks. Winks to Fass. Curly had Belgium back out of the uh, Leicester left for Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Winks back for Vestergaard and back for Fass again. But just going back to the goals, you talked about the positioning of Sarkic. I just wonder whether you think that that was a, a gamble that he had to take. It worked well for him in the first half as he cheated at the near post. And then Didi got the ball over him, so is that a goalkeeping error that's led to the second goal? I, w I would say so. I mean, obviously, because it ended up just being such a simple goal for Pat Sandaka. He's completely committed to that near post area that he cannot be beaten over the top of his head. And indeed, he's just clipped it up and over the top of him. And I talked about that in that first half. It was good goalkeeping in the first half because he was right ahead of the, the near post. He's got it wrong in this sense. Unless Leicester have recognised that and said that, in which case it's clever from them. Dewsbury Hall goes back to that fast, and Yannick Vestergaard will be able to play it for for Harry Winks. Leicester 2, Millwall 1. They turn it around inside four minutes with goals from Vestergaard and Dakar shortly after the resumption. 
Pass goes back for Yannick Vestergaard. Now roll to his right hand side for Connor Cody. Cody back for Winks. And Didi in the half space. Well, the movement's been so clever from Leicester with the adjustments that they made in the second half. And the Lions still haven't really got their collective heads around it yet. Who's picking up who and exactly how big the spaces should be between the elements of their midfield. Ricardo Pereira to Winks. Winks turning and sending it to his left. And Didi will help it further down the line for Mavadidi. Fast making his way forward now. Cody's got it. Cody's 10 yards outside the box. Down towards Fatuu. Fatuu taking on the dark haired McNamara. Good ball into a dangerous area. And it's only into the side netting. It was Mavadini that was coming in. The bounce was a little bit lively. Got his head to it. And the angle was prohibitive. But another excellent Leicester move. And the ball from Fatuu is absolutely sumptuous. It is so glorious. He just feeds it in with a little bit of pace on it. And the defenders, Cooper and Norton Cuffey, they don't want anything to do with it. They don't want to touch that towards their own goal. Mavadidi at the back post. He's scared, is what he is. He's scared of headbutting the post. Really, if that was a Mick Harford, that would be ball, goal, forehead, post. And wouldn't care. Mavadidi's just ducked out at the last second. Not too many Mick Harfords around these days. Leicester make a change. A Cody off. And James Justin has come on to replace him. Justin has scored the winner against Sunderland here. A player who really struggled over the last uh, 12, 13 months or so with injury. He had a, a nine-month spell on the sidelines. Uh, back to full fitness. His minutes still being managed a little bit. Hence why Cody's come in in a, a three-game week at... Uh, play an hour but Justin on for the final half hour of this with Leicester leading by two goals to one now since the turn of the century 90 points has always been enough for promotion Leicester currently on 52 as things stand still with 25 games left to play it's providing they hang on here no all the free kick swung towards the edge of the penalty area Vestergaard's cleared that McNamara with a high up and under headed away again by Dewsbury Hall Honeymoon will take it on inside the box there's a collision inside that penalty area referee allows play to go on Bradshaw's done well to win the seconds and has uh, flicked it off Winks and had a play for a Millwall throw and I mean look it, it's scrappy but that's what I think what, that's what they've got to do they've just got to win that second ball with the set plays feed that back in try and then get the ball wide play that in and again it's going to be a, a long throw from Leonard Ryan Leonard, who made his name at South End, actually just dropping this one short to George Savile. It's in his fourth spell with the club. High left footed ball in from him, attacked by Cooper. First, a ball in, a second one as well. Watmore couldn't quite react quickly enough. Then a shot comes in from Leonard, hits and Didi, and Millwall get their first corner since the early stages of the game. Absolutely perfect. Make it scrappy in there. Just let it bobble around, and then hopefully it's then going to fall for, for a white shirt, a white Millwall shirt. As it does, falls for Leonard, who had taken that short throw in. It was a poor effort, really. He didn't really get his foot through it. And indeed, he just turned his back instead of just facing it up. Left footed in, swinging corner. Plenty of whip on it, looking for Cooper. Fast got his head to it. Headed clear on the edge of the box. Counter attack could be on. Leonard has won that, not fairly. He. Uh, He's claiming that he took the ball, he certainly took a part of Harry Winks as well. It was a good free kick to give away because the counter attack was on four against three. And it is a free kick and no yellow card. No, you were right in what you said. He got the ball, didn't he? It was a good challenge. I think he's really, really unlucky actually to give that, that free kick away. Scores in the championship. With an hour played in most games, Cardiff nil, Birmingham 1, Coventry 1, Southampton nil. 2-1 to Leicester here, 2-1 to Norwich at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Queen's Park Rangers still being held by the 10 men of Plymouth, 0-0. And that means that Millwall still have a one-point advantage above the bottom three. Uh, QPR would be halving it. And if they were to win tonight, then uh, the Lions would only be outside the bottom three on goal difference with Huddersfield dropping down into the relegation zone. Uh, the other game in the uh, championship, an 8 o'clock kickoff, Middlesbrough leading whole 1 0. They play four minutes of the second half on T side. That early Manuel Latte Laugh goal, still the difference between the two sides. 
62 played here in the East Midlands as Fatou takes on McNamara and checks and then tries to beat him again McNamara stood to his task well but forced to slide in has conceded the corner which is Leicester Smith no he's a joy isn't he he is a joy to watch Fatou he's just got that lovely little shimmy that kind of Phil Foden shimmy where it just offsets the defender's balance and then he's away he's got that pace as well third corner of the second half they've already had more than they did in the first left footed in swinging delivery is well headed away at the near post by George Honeyman Dewsbury Hall left footed ball back through the midfield from him Ricardo Pereira to Harry Winks and straight back again fastest to his right that's the pass that's played now it goes back to Ricardo once more possession up into the 80s for Leicester now 80 20 over the game as a whole Mavadidi back for Winks fast Winks has played top flight football throughout his career has uh, ripped it up at, at this level uh, since he signed what a good acquisition he has been he makes it look so easy has so much time whenever he's on the ball in a, an excellent midfield alongside the man that uh, Dean described earlier as the best player outside the Premier League Keenan Dewsbury Hall Fass has uh, got Dewsbury Hall ahead of him and uh, just will turn back the other way towards Yannick Vestergaard it's 2-1 to Leicester it's amazing though how many players are so reluctant to maybe just drop down a level to rediscover themselves almost their confidence realise what a good player they actually are they might have got down with having not played or been in and out of sides not felt like a big part of the team and you can see it with Winks you can see how much he's enjoying this role with Leicester how much he's regaining that confidence and quality that he's clearly got and you would imagine he'll be playing in the Premier League again next year Leeds and Ipswich very much still in the chase but just to reiterate the situation if it stays this way Leicester will have 52 points Ipswich 51 and then Leeds third will have 41 so Leicester will have an 11 point cushion inside the top three now, only one side's ever won 26 games and not gone up from this division that was Reading back in 2017 so if Leicester win tonight realistically they're only going to need to win nine of the last 25 matches take 41 points and that's about top six form so nine wins 12 draws from here and they'll be absolutely fine you would imagine they've got a free kick which is uh, just outside the center circle there's a, a poor challenge by Cooper on Dakar Cooper is one of the three Millwall defenders that's been booked one of those Wallace has now gone off uh, Cooper in very strongly there on uh, Pats and Dakar has been set off in this fixture before nothing more than a, a lecture for the Lions captain who was only back in the side after suspension today he picked up his fifth yellow card in his last appearance I think it was important that he got some of the ball there yes he got Dakar and caught him it looked like a painful one just on top of the shin but he got some of the ball Cooper and I think that's probably what's just helped him in the eyes of the referee that final thoughts incidentally about statistical parallels with uh, the championship seasons of years gone by no side has ever picked up 42 points from the first 20 games and not been promoted ever and Leicester have got 49 yeah so I mean all of these things you're saying is is must be music to the Leicester City fans ears because you would expect what you've just said about the amount of wins needed in the games remaining would feel pretty happy and comfortable about that the way their team's playing as well yes yeah, so that means that Leicester and Ipswich are already up <laughs> okay let's, let's sort the playoffs out now it's uh, not anything like as simple as that of course another free kick has uh, been given Leicester's way Ricardo Pereira uh, the player that was fouled what more help back to his feet by fast the Lions hanging in there had that little flurry for a couple of minutes where they won a corner and there was a bit of a skirmish inside the the penalty area from that but haven't really had too many chances they're going to make a double change in a moment in a bit to get themselves back into the game and it's the front two from the weekend who are going to be coming on Kevin Nisbet and Zian Fleming so double change imminent for the Lions with a quarter of the game to go with TalkSport 2 Leicester 2 Millwall 1 Yannick Vestergaard 
Down towards uh, about Fass. Fass bring it forward towards halfway. Borussia Dortmund 1, PSG 0. Karim Adeyemi is the man that has scored that goal. And that means that Newcastle have a little bit of a comfort zone. They still lead Milan 1-0. And that group as it stands right now, Dortmund 13, Newcastle 8, PSG 7, Milan 5. So Newcastle going through if they win and PSG don't and PSG are losing. It'd be some achievement if they were to get out of oh. that group and PSG didn't. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But just the single goals in it at the moment. <laughs> Oh, plenty can change. Newcastle can see the whole picture completely changes. But they lead 1-0. Over on Talk Sport, Adrian Durham keeping up to date with everything as it happens. Here's Ricardo Pereira getting the ball inside the penalty area. It's 2-1 to Leicester with 22 minutes to go. And Tom Cannon's going to be coming on for the uh, Foxes in a moment. So the next time the ball goes out of play, both sides will be making changes. Fast. To... His left hand side for Dewsbury Hall. Cannon, you would imagine, will replace Dacker. Really good player, Tom Cannon. Anybody that saw him on loan at Preston last season was hugely impressed. He did very well for Everton's age group teams as well. They're earning him the big money move here, but his uh, Leicester career hasn't got going yet because of a back problem that uh, he arrived here with. Uh, but he'll be coming on for his the second appearance of the Foxes very shortly. Vestergaard's got the ball. That turns in possession inside his own half. Filing fast. And fast slows it right down to walking pace. He's trying to uh, draw what more towards him before side footing the ball back towards Vestergaard. And it's just a game of piggy in the middle at the moment. And uh, uh, obediently Bradshaw and what more doing the chasing. But they knew that Leicester were going to be able to play through him. Justin getting it forward. One back by Norton Cuffey. Fast across the cover. Just before Watmore could pick up possession, then Justin works it forward, uh, trying to get Ndidi into play. Ndidi on the stretch, couldn't control it cleanly. One back though by Leicester again. Every time they will get it forward towards halfway, they only have it there for a split second for Leicester to regain possession and come again, and that's why the possession's in the 80s. Yeah, and, uh, look, it's excellent from Leicester, but they've lost their belief, Millwall. The, he the, the shoulders are shrugged. Great little ball into Dakar. Cooper's done well again. But put it out for a corner. But they're just, they've lost that belief. In that first half, every time they had a counter attack, they looked like they believed that something could come of it. Second half, it looks different. I think that's why he's making the changes. Uh, an equaliser for Southampton at Coventry. Samuel Adozi with that. Coventry 1, Southampton 1. Saints trying to uh, extend their unbeaten streak to 13. Uh, the change will be made. Patson Dacker coming off. He leaves the field as the potential match winner. Big ovation for him. Number of Leicester fans right in front of us standing to applaud as Dacker makes way. And the Zambian striker coming off to be replaced by Tom Cannon, who finally made his debut against Plymouth on Saturday. He got nearly half an hour in that game. He'll get a little bit less than that tonight, but it's so good to see the youngster back. And if you'll pardon the pun, which is unintentional, Cannon fully firing again. And he makes his way inside the penalty area now. And Millwall will save their double change for after they've defended this corner. 2-1 to Leicester with 71 gone on TalkSport 2. Balling towards the near post. It was the worst of the corners so far tonight. It was easily knocked away by McNamara. Dewsbury Hall comes back and heads it inside his own half for Ricardo Pereira. And he'll turn it back to Hermansen just to keep him interested, if anything else, because he's hardly seen it. He's been a spectator in this second half so far. Fast back to him again. 18 minutes for Leicester to see this out, but they're still confident of more. Yeah, I mean, look, they're, they're so far in control of this game. Even though it's 2-1, it feels like it's 4-1, but it's not. And, and they've got to be careful. They've done this a couple of times this season, Leicester, where they have been comfortable and they do have lots of the ball, but then they've conceded late on and given points away and they don't want to be in that position. That third goal would would be huge, I think, for them just to really see off Millwall. Now, Harling has uh, conceded another corner, uh, so Millwall still haven't been able to make the change. Antwerp lead Barcelona again, 2-1. That's Victor Janssen, the former Tottenham man, the leading scorer this season who's got that. It's his 12th of the campaign. Antwerp 2, Barcelona 1. 
and an equaliser for PSG at Dortmund as well. Newcastle still going through as things stand. In comes the corner, edge of the six-yard box, Cooper got his head to it, back in from Fatou, headed away by Cooper again. Justin gets his foot on the ball, plays back towards halfway. Dewsbury Hall runs round it, passes it back for James Justin, former Luton man, former England defender over on the left-hand touchline. Winks the uh, deepest of the outfield players in blue. Just picking up possession, takes it towards the edge of the centre circle, drops his shoulder, comes back through the midfield, it's uh, laid off. Uh, by Ricardo Pereira, who's probably had more touches than anyone else tonight. Ball laid down the right-hand side. Fatou caught from behind by McNamara. The referee said he played the ball as well. It's a heavy challenge. Uh, Fatou, with an angry reaction, turns and looks at McNamara. And there are a few verbals going on. The referee clearly indicated that he thought he played the ball. Millwall will make the change. And uh, the front two coming off. Watmore and Bradshaw being replaced by Fleming and Nisbet. Yeah, they've, just, they've offered very little, actually. What more I thought was excellent in the first half in terms of being that outlet. Bradshaw obviously taking his headed goal very, very well, but they've offered very little in the second half, and they need to get to grips, really, with the possession that Leicester have got in the main between Justin Fass and Vestergaard. Well, Nisbet's had a touch already as he uh, received a misdirected ball through the Leicester midfield. Norton Cuffey strides forward down the Millwall right uh, but it's cleared picked up though by Saville and the referee says it was a foul a yellow card is shown and it's Leonard who has uh, received it it was uh, his challenge uh, Saville querying the decision with the referee well it was Leonard that the uh, referee pointed to as he uh, went away but it was definitely Saville with the foul it definitely was unless they were just directly in line but it was Saville that made the challenge, that's for sure. It's rightly a, a yellow card, stopping a counter-attack. Yeah, it must have been Saville, but it must have been. It just uh, did appear as though the referee was pointing at Leonard, though, as he uh, went away. But the fourth yellow card shown to a Millwall player tonight. Fifteen minutes to go. Atletico Madrid are going to be winning their Champions League group there. 2-0 up now at home to Lazio. And Samuel Lino scoring the second goal. Newcastle still lead 1-0. 1-1 between Dortmund and PSG. Newcastle going through on their head-to-head -head record as things stand right now. All the details over on Talk Sport. Here on Talk Sport 2. We'll bring you the climax of this. Leicester 2, Millwall 1. Possession now 83-17. But for 17% of the possession, the Lions have had seven shots. But Leicester... Working out where they were going wrong in the first half. Although we felt that they deserved to be behind at half time, they certainly should have had a penalty, we felt. Uh, but in the second half, the slight subtle changes in the midfield are uh, seemingly going to win them the game. Yeah, and when they do get into this position, they're horrible to play against because they keep the ball so well. You've got to carry a threat, which they did in the first half, Millwall. That has gone. Without that threat, it's very, very simple for for Leicester City but you've got to carry that threat on the break and they'd be hoping Joe Edwards that Fleming and Nisbet can give them that edge now on that counter attack it's fast Ricardo Pereira play down the uh, right hand touch line and it's Pratt and is uh, also going to be coming on in a moment ball laid back for Sarkic the uh, Millwall goalkeeper finds halfway but he doesn't find a teammate Nisbet, summer signing from Hibbs, urging the Millwall players to push forward. 5-3-2 for the Lions with uh, a three, diamond three for Leicester. Vestergaard to James Justin. Uh, Justin came on to replace Cody. He uh, came on on the left of the three centre-halves and fast moved across to the right. Vestergaard just slowing things down again as uh, Norwich take a 3-1 lead and Newcastle's Champions League hopes have been hit with a Christian Pulisic equaliser on St. James's Park. Newcastle 1, Milan 1, Pulisic with the goal is sixth of the season. Newcastle, remember, only qualify if they win and PSG don't. But that equalising goal... That means that Newcastle will be playing Europa League football as things stand. Here's Dewsbury Hall for Leicester. Left-hand side of the box, pulled back towards Cannon, who will get a left-footed shot in, which is blocked by Harding on the edge of the six. But comes out towards the edge of the penalty area where he is fired in. 
Ricardo Pereira making it 3-1 to Leicester. And there's a sense of reality now about the scoreline in terms of the utter domination we've seen in the game. They were just waiting with the possession that they've had for Millwall to switch off. And it was down the left-hand side and it was that man, Keenan Drewsby Hall again with a really intelligent run in off the back of Ryan Leonard. Gets down to the byline, cuts it back for Cannon who does well to swivel and shoot but then when it falls for Ricardo Pereira, he gets so lucky. And actually, it comes off Wilfred and Didi. Who the goal will surely go down to. Ricardo Pereira with the shot. It hits Ndidi on the backside and goes past Sarkic for 3-1. How's your look? Well, Cannon doing well to swivel on the edge of the penalty area. And yeah, it's hit Ndidi. And deflects him past the goalkeeper. Pereira wheeling away. And he has been credited with the goal. But it is Wilfred Ndidi that will end up, I'm sure, as the man on the score sheet. Now another big ovation from the Leicester fans. This is for Keenan Jewsbury Hall as he leaves the field to be replaced by Dennis Pratt. Pratt coming on. He made his first appearance for three months on Saturday. He's missed a, a lot of the campaign with a back injury. But he's on and replaces Jewsbury Hall. Now Ryan Longman's going to be coming on for Millwall very shortly. We've got 11 minutes to go. It looks like potentially Billy Mitchell will be uh, arriving for the Lions and that will be their final changes. 3-1 Leicester. Porto 3, Shattered the next 1. Norwich 3, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Uh, the Canaries leading scorer Jonathan Rowe has uh, made his ninth of the season and the Canaries are going to be limbering up for the East Anglian Derby at the weekend with a victory. Free kick taken here by Savile, who slipped as he fires it inside the penalty area. Chance to deliver the ball, he's in, and Nisbet couldn't get the touch as he was flicked towards goal by Honeyman. It just came in behind Nisbet and was cleared with the goalkeeper beaten off his line. Pratt able to knock it out towards the Leicester left. Well, they haven't had too many undue alarms, the Foxes, particularly in the second half, but... That was Millwall's best moment. Oh, they won't have a better chance than that. No way will they have a better chance. And Leonard needs to do better. It's headed down by Cooper into his path. He's totally free. What he's got to do is, he's just got to cushion this to Nisbet. And he overhits it. And that's then when Honeyman stretches and get it, gets it towards the goal with Valt Fast clearing it off the line. But if he just cushions that to Nisbet, he just heads it into an empty net. It's a massive chance. Vestigar, four for Harry Winks, we're into the final ten minutes. Leicester, who were a goal down at half-time, lead by three goals to one. And they're going back top of the table, a point above Ipswich, who are in action against Norwich, Saturday lunchtime. And you'll hear it on TalkSport 2. Fast. Going back to his goalkeeper. From Anson, rolling the studs of his right boot over the top of the ball. Sends the pass out towards Vestergaard, gets the return, then lays it forward here for Harry Winks. Play forward towards Yannick Vestergaard again. They will still waiting to make the change. Cooper comes across and heads it away. Brought back down under control there by George Savile. Norton Cuffey will try and bring it forward. Goes into the feet of Nisbet. Fleming waiting, peeling away to the left-hand side for Millwall, and uh, Honeyman's done really well to find him. A good turn as well from uh, Zian Fleming, and the Dutchman brought down by Fass, who will receive a yellow card. Excellent play, wasn't it, from Fleming? Just saw Valt Fass on his left-hand side, swivel to his right, and he was away. Valt Fass just dragging him back. So Millwall can make the uh, double change now. Uh, George Honeyman, the first player to be replaced. Uh, Ryan Longman, on loan from Hull, is uh, coming on to replace him. And a straight swap in the heart of the midfield will see Billy Mitchell replace Alan Campbell. Final changes made by the Lions. That's all five now. Eight minutes to go. And if they were to score one from this free kick, well, you never know, it might just set up a nervy finale. The National League South, incidentally, having a Waterlooville, bottom of the table, lead Hemel Hempstead 1-0.
In comes the free kick towards the edge of the six yard box. It's headed and easily played. Now Manson hardly had to move just to uh, scoop the ball up into his hands. And it remains 3 1, seven minutes to go. And Leicester, I'm sure, will believe that they're home and hosed already. Yeah, I think so. I think so. They've uh, they've been excellent in the second half. That change from Maresca at half time just to go to a, a diamond midfield. It just scrambled the heads of the Millwall players and they never really recovered, to be honest. And then once they've got themselves in front, Leicester, they're so calm and composed on the ball. They've just ticked the time away. Fatou. Who would be high on many lists for the uh, player of the match, I'm sure. Fast goes back to his goalkeeper. Play four towards Vestergaard and back again. Now into the feet of Ricardo Pereira and uh, back to the goalkeeper. Fox is next in action Monday night. They're away at Birmingham. And that one is also live right here on Talk Sport 2. Uh, just down the road in the second city, Birmingham at home to Leicester. Live on Talk Sport 2 Monday night. Pratt trying to work the ball inside the penalty area. And it's swept away by the retreating Cooper. After a fashion, but he's uh, got it away from his goal, out of play for another Leicester corner. The uh, corner count almost in double figures now. Yeah, looking slightly fatigued, aren't they? That Millwall back line, hell of a lot of work put in in that first half, and they're just starting to, to flag a little bit. Cooper, Harding and Leonard just being pulled out of position with those midfield runners. Corner taken short. Winks back to Fatou. Fatou inside the penalty area. Justin's touch was heavy. It's half clear. Out as far as Harry Winks. Winks his ball in. Clear. Justin trying his luck. Left footed shot that cannoned away outside the penalty area. And again, the lines will be able to clear. And then Norton Cuffey going up for it. Got caught by Ricardo Pereira. And the referee stops play immediately just to make sure he's all right. Because that looked a heavy fall. And he went down holding his head. Yeah, a big intake of breath from everyone in the stadium when you just saw that challenge and that clash was bound to happen both players with eyes on the ball but never particularly nice to see i think it was more the landing for norton Cuffey rather than the contact when they went up for the header Looked like he landed awkwardly on his shoulder an equalizer for liam de Lapp of hull at middlesbrough in the eight o'clock kickoff uh, this uh, injury for norton Cuffey as he continues to receive treatment will give us the opportunity to I'll remind you what the scores are elsewhere. Cardiff nil, Birmingham 1, Coventry 1, Southampton 1, Norwich 3, Sheffield Wednesday 1, QPR nil, 10 man, Plymouth nil, and 1-1 one, one between Middlesbrough and Hull. National League South, Haven and Waterloo go 1, Hemel Hempstead nil. Aldershot only three minutes away uh, from getting Stockport to extra time. In the FA Cup, Stockport nil, older shot nil in that replay. In the Scottish Championship, late on, Arbroath won, Wraith won. The losing run might be coming to an end. In the Champions League, Newcastle won, Milan won, and Dortmund won, PSG won. So, as things stand right now, and the details continue uh, to come your way over on Talk Sport, but Newcastle will finish third in the group. They need a goal there. If they can find it, then it will be they that would go through if the other game ends 1-1. Elsewhere in the Champions League, Antwerp continues to leave, lead Barcelona by two goals to one with Vincent Janssen, the hero for the Belgians at the moment. Atletico Madrid 2, Lazio 0, Celtic still a goal up at home to Feyenoord, Porto 3, Shakhtar Donetsk 1. And you're up to date with all of the goals here on TalkSport 2. We're back underway, Norton Cuffey's back on the field, he's alright, able to continue. And Harry Winks in possession can sweep it over to the left-hand side for James Justin. Justin's got it. Back for Vestergaard. Three and a half minutes to go. And uh, Leicester with a, a comfortable 3 1 lead. And they're going to have more points after 21 games than any other side in championship history. And you can see why. I mean, the quality, although that was a mistake, was a foul, though, by McNamara. But you can just sense with the quality that they've got. If you think of the players that are missing through injury as well this evening, but still. The 11 that took the field and even the substitutes, you know, Dennis Pratt coming on as well. James Justin, Cannon, you know, it's just oozes quality throughout the whole squad. Yep, no Vardy, no uh, Ian Acho, though neither of those are too far away. And no Yunus, uh, no Callum Doyle at the back. And no Casey McAteer, who had such a good start to the season. 
It's some squad for this level. Here's Fass. Bringing the ball forward. And turning. Laying it back for Ricardo Pereira, who uh, immediately gets a return from Yannick Vestergaard. Pereira again controlling it. But Vestergaard pokes it forward again. Now Pratt controlling it and finding his goalkeeper. Well, the Lions have got a big game of the weekend. They're at home to Huddersfield. And then after they go to Stoke, they've got QPR. So two huge home games coming up as far as Millwall are concerned. Uh, win both of those and they've been moments tonight where they've played really well. I mean, defensively in the first 25 minutes, half an hour tonight, they're outstanding. Win both of those and the bottom of the table look very different. Ball chipped in from the left-hand side by Mavadidi and easily claimed by Sarkic. Well, what you've seen tonight, bearing in mind that uh, a late QPR goal will see Millwall only outside the bottom three on goal difference tonight, do you think that they're in severe relegation trouble? I think with the lack of goals, it's, oh, it's a good break, though, for Fleming, Millwall. Fleming's got it and uh, plays it to his left for McNamara. And McNamara again back towards the edge of the penalty area. Fleming clipping it in fast and he headed away. I think with the lack of goals, that has to be a, a massive worry. I always thought Millwall would keep clean sheets defensively, which they haven't done, especially in re recent weeks as well. So if you start getting it wrong at both ends of the pitch, you're going to struggle, aren't you? And, and they need to find some firepower because... The, you're right, in the first half you thought there's enough there, you can see there's enough quality on the break, they look dangerous, but can they finish the chances that they create? And that home form has to change, drastically. Champions League consolation for Shakhtar, I say consolation, still time to go, 17 minutes to go, the 3-2 down away to Porto. But a big goal in the FA Cup at Edgeley Park, Stockport nil. Older shot one, Oliver Scott on 88 minutes for Tommy Witherington's older shot, who've had a fantastic run. They scored seven away from home at Swindon in the last round, and they lead one nil away at lead two leaders Stockport tonight with very little time to go. Here's Danny McNamara for Millwall, who trailed three one. We're about to go into stoppage time. West Harding four towards George Savile. Savile poking it forward, McNamara's got it again. Fleming, the Dutchman, are dropping deep. 90 minutes are up, we haven't seen uh, how many extra minutes are going to be added. The fourth official comes forward now and shows us six. Norton Cuffey. Back towards halfway for Cooper. To his left is Wes Harding. Harding coming forward for Millwall, down to... The left-hand touchline, George Savile will take over. McNamara showing for the ball in the midfield, gets it. Drops it at the uh, feet of Harding. More possession for Millwall in the latter stages of the game. Leicester happy just to protect what they've got, and it is uh, a comfortable lead. 3-1 with five and a half minutes of stoppage time remaining. And just a reminder, as things stand right now, both of the games in Newcastle's group in the Champions League are 1-1, and as a consequence, Newcastle will be going into the Europa League. But if they can find a late winner, then they've certainly got a great chance and would be going through if PSG couldn't reply in kind. 91 on the clock here on TalkSport 2. Leicester 3, Millwall 1. And we'll be going to St. James's Park as soon as this game finishes. You can hear what's going on there right now over on TalkSport. Here's Fleming. Dutchman playing it out to the Millwall right. Norton Cuffey with the delivery, which hit James Justin on the back and the cannons out to the touchline. Norton Cuffey wins the seconds. Play back to him by Billy Mitchell. And now Norton Cuffey making a darting run inside the penalty area. Played the ball towards Leonard. Leonard doing his level best to be able to get past Justin, who's uh, held him up. Leonard then trying to buy a corner or a throw, and it gets the former. And it's a corner which will be taken over on the right-hand touchline by Millwall. PSG have just scored at Dortmund. Dortmund 1, PSG 2. It's Kylian Mbappe, perhaps inevitably, who has scored the goal. His 19th goal of the season. And that means that Newcastle are a bit further away from the round of 16 of the Champions League. In comes the corner. And the uh, goalkeeper is there. He spilt it under pressure from Nisbet and the rebound is put in and Millwall have one back with three and a half minutes of stoppage time to go it's Leicester 3, 
Millwall 2 and it might just be game on what a weird goal because none of the Leicester players moved at all Nisbet is just on the goalkeeper Hermanson he doesn't really do anything Hermanson tries to push him out of the way and makes a right mess of it he ends up just pushing Nisbet into the ball so then it just falls it hits Vestergaard and then it's Nisbet and Wes Harding that stab it into the goal I'm not quite sure I'm sure it'll be Nisbet that'll claim it that's for sure but that just wasn't needed what was Hermanson thinking so 3-2 with three minutes of stoppage time left to play now that PSG goal at Dortmund has been disallowed the VAR has chalked it off so oh, oh. still 1-1 there and 1-1 in Newcastle's game they've got 14 minutes to go at St James's Park two and a half minutes to go here and it's Leicester 3 Millwall 2 late winner for Wraith in Scotland Arbroath 1 Wraith Rovers 2 a goal officially credited here to Kevin Nisbet his fifth since his move from Hibs Leicester have got it with Dennis Pratt Pratt coming in off the right hand touch like two and a half minutes of stoppage time to go Fast is in support of uh, Fatou. Fatou can't play it back. It's off Nisbet, goes out of play, and it's a throw that will be taken on the right hand side by Ricardo Pereira. Pereira launching it inside the penalty area. Cannon made a really good run. He's got support if he can lay it back. Harding made sure he couldn't. He got it away. And Didi in the heart of the midfield skies a clearance over the touchline and out of play for a throw that will be taken on the Lions left. Two minutes to go. And if they can create a half chance, you never know what might happen. Harding, in his haste to get the ball upfield, nicked about 10 yards with the throw. Uh, referee Keith Stroud has uh, asked him to retreat to roughly where the ball went out of play. And he's done that. Then takes the throw, goes back for his goalkeeper. Sarkic, getting it forward upfield. A little bit over hit, if anything. Longman going up for it, helped it on. Fast could dig it clear off the top of McNamara's head Savile is in there Leicester a little bit frantic and fractious in the midfield try and get it away brought back down by the Lions again with McNamara 3-2 to Leicester with just over a minute to go and Didi clearing his lines Leonard getting it back to his goalkeeper although not where his goalkeeper was he had plenty of time to recover Leonard has it again good pressure from the front here by Harry Winks and he'll press the goalkeeper, but Sarkic clears over the halfway line. Brought down by Norton Cuffey. And towards Ryan Longman. Norton Cuffey continues his run. Justin goes back for his goalkeeper. And Hermanson will be able to clear towards halfway. Touch from Cannon. A good one. Lays it back for Winks. Winks out towards James Justin. 40 seconds remaining. 3-2 Leicester. Who are going back to the top if they can hold the lead. Moreska looking agitated. Millwall win it back. Vestergaard gets it forward. Right footed. Was he fouled? Yes, he was. And um, that should be that. Yeah, I mean, look, it shouldn't be anywhere near as nervy for Leicester City as it is. It should have been comfortable with that sloppy goal that they've conceded. Just a nervy few minutes. Just got to keep it in the corner now. Jake Cooper has gone up for Millwall after that goal. He's playing centre forward. Hull have scored their 2-1 up for Middlesbrough in the 8 o'clock kickoff. Seconds remaining here. Long ball out towards the Leicester right. Sails over Fatou's head and out of play for a throw, which McNamara wants to take quickly, and Fatou was doing everything he could to stop that happening. Throws taken by Harding. A little bit of time added on at the end of the six minutes because of the goal in stoppage time. Support clearance from Sarkic. Still ends up somehow at the feet of Mitchell. Norton Cuffey on halfway. Can the Lions get it forward here? Falling to the feet of Mitchell again. Good turn from him. Out towards the right-hand side for Longman. But that's the full-time whistle.